what do you mean? Why you say it like that? I, I mean, it was like, is that it? What, what, what did you say it like that for, Megan? I didn't know if you were out of here. Did it sound incomplete? Bye. How's the balance in your life, in your work life, in your startup, in your business? How's life going? Just talking about balance today as entrepreneurs. And this is where I talk about risking it all and startups, etc. My name is Brad Hogan, and I'm a business guy here in Central Florida. I'm just going to talk to you about work-life balance today. What this is conversation is about was not about. You know, Etsy has this awesome uh, diversity and inclusion work-life policy. That's not what we're talking about. Zoom has this awesome policy about time off. And Starbucks has a good work-life balance program that they'll work out for the employees. Well, guess what? We're not a Fortune 500 company. We're talking about startups here. We're talking about small business. None of this stuff applies. I know it doesn't apply to me and my business. But some of the things we need to be aware of and we need to look for, if you can hire and delegate and you're at that spot, You've got some money, you've been successful in business before or currently, and you're wanting to start a new venture, well, figure out what you're doing, do your research, etc., and hire it out. Or, in my case, you know, just delegate it. Delegate it to your assistants, uh, hire the people that you need, and get the thing going. But short of that, the other things... If you're, you're doing it yourself, what you need to know is approximately 90% of all startups fail. 10% of all startups fail within the first year. It's a high-risk deal. And because of that, we need to do everything we can to make the business successful and pour into it. So how do we get that balance between our life and what we call our work life. I'm not sure there is a good balance. Most startups, they fail because it's two reasons. They're either undercapitalized or mismanaged. It's easier to understand dollars and cents. Do we have enough money to do this or don't we? But as far as the mismanagement, as I'm counseling other people in business, what we find on the mismanagement side is Frequently, it's not some gross negligence thing, but it's, I didn't know what I didn't know. They didn't quite have enough information, and they didn't do enough research. They got into an area, and it's something they didn't see coming. I mean, it's just blindsided. Suddenly, it's one of those things, whether it goes down a rabbit hole or whether it's immediate impact, it puts them out of business. That could lead to a financial thing. Again, back to the balance thing. How's that all fit in? It takes time to do the research. It takes resources to fund the business, whatever that is. Understand that 33% of all business startups are started with under $5,000. 69% of all businesses are started at home. That's usually where they start before they moved into that big ivory tower or out into the warehouse or wherever it is. It's just a simple startup at home. Entrepreneurs that are committed, dedicated, having that successful business, many of us work seven days a week, work night and day. It's nonstop. It's that drive to get it done. The answer for all of us is different. I talk about us all being a product of our environment, every single one of us. Good news is you can change your environment, but what is your environment? And I, I think this is so key to the balance question. What is your environment? Are you the single guy, single girl that doesn't need anyone's approval? You're on your own path. You say, you know what? I'm working 24 seven. I don't care about fill in the blank. I don't have kids. I don't have that excuse. I don't have a, a boyfriend, girlfriend. I'll break up with them. This is more important. You know, is that you? Is that not you? I don't know. It doesn't matter. 
It's your dedication. It's your thought, your frame of mind. If you're in a relationship, it's getting some understanding and or maybe it's extended family. It's not that everyone has to approve of what you're doing, but it's you getting the understanding of where you're at. And I'll, I'll give you one that's just kind of kind of primary and applies to most people starting a business is, say you're in a relationship, married or dating, doesn't matter. Your significant other works a nine to five. They come home in the evening, they want to fix dinner, Let's sit down to a nice dinner. Let's talk. Even if it's casual conversation at a casual dinner. Let's have dinner in the evening. Let's talk. Your phone goes off. Your phone rings. If that happens to be part of your business model, you're in the service business of some kind. You've ran an ad. You've handed out business cards. You're expecting clients to call you. You've got to pick up that phone. Does your spouse understand? Does your significant other understand or Are they in the frame of mind of, hey, it's after five o'clock. I mean, can't you just put your phone down for five minutes, for 10 minutes? Can't you talk to me? Why do you have to pick up your phone every time it rings? Well, it's getting that understanding that's typically done with a conversation or several conversations so they understand, hey, this is my lifeline. I can sit here and talk to you during the day while you're working. I can make time. I can be available, but when that phone rings, I've got to answer it. Those are my clients. Those are my homeowners. Those are my customers. Those are the people I need to do business with. It's it's getting that understanding and with mutual respect. That can apply whether you're a family person, dating, whether you have kids. Also, the support. Let's say you've got kids and you want to play with your kids in the evening or on the weekend. The phone rings. You need to take that call. It's having the support of a spouse. And that's through the conversation and understanding where the the spouse says to the kids, mom is doing this or dad is doing this. We got to take a call for five minutes or 10 minutes or Got to run to an appointment for an hour or two hours because they love us and they're supporting us. You know, they make this possible or this is a dream or this is what we do when we want something. This is the work. It's explaining. It's explaining to the kids and and those around in an endearing, loving way. And I think that's life. That's life. And those of us that came from an entrepreneurial home that's what we heard you know this this is the way it works it's getting that buy-in as a business owner you know I'm on 24 7 had this conversation yesterday I had it with my son he was telling me two days ago he said man I feel bad dad I you know I didn't get much done after 12 o'clock noon two days ago because the three-year-old was home I don't know the daycare was closed for some reason they were, they were revamping something or redoing something. Typically, the three-year-old is not that needy, but for whatever reason, that day he was. I said to my son, I go, you know, that's the, the great thing about being an entrepreneur. You get to decide. But also, there are times when you've got to go. Other people are enjoying their Saturday and Sunday. We typically get to do that also. But if something comes up, and it has to be done. I don't care if it's Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon. We go do it. We go do it. If that thing can't wait, discipline. Discipline is doing what needs to be done every time, when it needs to be done, the way it needs to be done. That's discipline. That's the beauty of owning your own business. There's nothing like it. Nothing pays like it. Nothing. There's no greater feeling than owning your own business and being successful. And time commitment. You know, once we get on the other side of that thing, it's up and running. We can delegate. We've got our own time. That's the light at the end of the tunnel for this work-life balance thing that we're talking about right now. It's heavy on the front end, a lot of work. But once we've got it up and running, we learn how to delegate. It can be easier. That's up to you. That's what we're all looking for, hoping for, 
dreaming about. That's what happens. That's what happens in business. You can't get away from the responsibility, though. You always have that responsibility. As we become a little more successful and have employees, whether we have a few or a lot, we always have that responsibility to those employees and their families. But the work-life balance, I think it gets easier as our business grows, as we become more successful. On the front end, Man, a lot of commitment as I'm talking to other business owners, helping them through their startup, hear things like, man, I went into this, I was on fire, just this is crazy, I want to do this, this is the opportunity of a lifetime. Three months in, the single moms tell me, yeah, my mom and dad were saying, man, why don't you spend more time with your daughter or your son? This is just too hard. It's too big a time commitment and as an entrepreneur i let that person off the hook i say yeah you know maybe this isn't for you maybe a nine to five but i'm thinking man you're, you're going to be working that nine to five for the rest of your life whereas an entrepreneur if you put the work in up front you'll be able to spend more time with your family with your kids frequently that talk and that conversation comes from parents who are not entrepreneurs and they don't understand it you have to make a decision for you you've got to decide hopefully you get that buy-in love and support from family and or friends those are significant close to you that matter but the most important is your decision I think the other thing with work-life balance is mentors and partners talk about partnerships mentors can be so important because they can save you so much time. They've been there, they've done it, they can tell you what to watch out for. You can see the mentor that's in the middle of their successful career, or even at the tail end of their successful career, they are your mentor because they've done what you're wanting to do. And what does that look like? What attracted you? They would have many of the same conversations in depth as what I've touched on here. This is the trade-off. This is when it's required. This is when you need to be there. This is when you can take time with your family. What's that look like? You know, I have I have friends or professionals at a very high level that are at two ends of the spectrum. And we study this in undergrad, university, and college in business. The two spectrums are you're a sole proprietor, you're a startup by yourself, or you can be this corporation, just make millions and millions and millions of dollars, and you've got all these employees. As an entrepreneur and sole proprietor, and I'll take that just a step further, I'm an attorney, a mortgage broker, an accountant. Maybe I've got an office staff of three or four people. If your business looks like that, you're the guy or you're the girl. You've got to be there to sign the document, to do the heavy lifting. Even if your staff, it's computerized and they can do most of the legwork for you, you've still got to sign your name on the dotted line, sign the contract, sign off on the form for the IRS, whatever it is. If you're not there for an extended period of time, it's not going to run. Yes, you can go play golf on Friday. Yes, you can go to lunch on Wednesday. Yes, you can go to your association meeting. You can do all that stuff. But those people I know, and one guy's even a dentist, small practice, okay? He is the dentist. He does not have two or three or four other dentists practicing with him. When he shuts down his office, everybody's on vacation. The office is closed. So he does this four times a year. Three of the vacations, everybody's off. That fourth vacation he takes, he takes the entire staff and spouses. They pick a destination. Just talk to him. I said, where'd you guys go at the end of the year? He said, ah, we went, went for seven days and we went to Caribbean you know, hung out. It's kind of an appreciation thing. That's different than the big business. The work-life balance in the big business, we hear about these guys, right? Because they're top of their field, they're top of their game. And typically a lot of branding and or advertising goes with that. These are the guys that are on the golf course all the time. They're hanging out at the country club. They're hanging out the on their yacht. They're hanging out at 
all the professional sports games, you know, they're just living life on their terms. The work-life balance, what's that look like? Do they have somebody in place that's really running the corporation? Are they now just on the board? Or are they really still the president? They've got some free time. They've got the luxury because they've got a system in place. They're still responsible. But the main thing I want to tell you is you've got that big corporation. You need big time reserves because everything, every business doesn't matter. Every business is cyclical. It's all going to cycle. And when it's down here, you got all that overhead. You got to cover it. It's uh, rent, it's office space, it's employees, etc. Just be ready. It's just a different deal. When it cycles down here and you're needed, you've got to be present. What that typically looks like is you get to go play golf and you get to hang out on the yacht. But when things cycles, COVID hit, oh my gosh, everything was great. No, not that we got wiped out, but the conversation was, what are we going to do? I mean, we didn't see this coming. Nobody did. Came out of left field. So get together. What would level one cuts look like? What would level two cuts look like? What's level three cuts look like? Well, and none of that happened at all. Our business continued to thrive, but the point is hands-on. It was all hands-on deck, and man, I was engrossed in that thing 24-7 to get that thing figured out. There was basically work-life balance because the business is running well. Everybody's in place. Everything's functioning with a high level of diversity within the company and authority and responsibility in different areas where I'm able to delegate. But when something happened, Man, I mean, I was I was 24-7. They knew it at my house, you know, may not see dad for a couple days. I got to get this thing figured out. Whether I was locked in a room at my house, on the phone, on the computer, just getting stuff figured out, that lasted for a brief period of time. And then we're back to operations. I'm still engaged at a high level. Uh, obviously not 24-7 once we got going, but there's still stuff to navigate. That's work-life balance. That's business ownership, what we're talking about. But back to the startup, if you've got partners, they can handle some of the load. Partnerships can be tough. I've been in some good ones. And I think the most important thing about a partnership going to work-life balance, the best thing you can do is get that thing written down. I'm talking about setting up your partnership. How does a real partnership function? A lot of that has to do with operating agreement. Here's what you're going to do. Here's what I'm going to do. Here's what you're going to put in. Here's what I'm going to put in. Kind of define our roles. And that goes to work-life balance. And maybe both of you are just, you know, working like crazy in the startup. You've got somebody to run with you and they're sharing half the load. You know, that could be what that thing looks like. You've got to figure out for yourself what it is. It takes approximately six months for most startups to hire their first employee. So what that tells us is most startups are sole proprietorships. It's a one man, one gal deal till we get this thing off the ground. Just overall, you've got to figure out what your deal is within your business and what your commitment is. It would be prudent to go ahead and write that down also. Here's how much time I'm going to commit to it. I know one thing, consistency is the most important thing. If you've got another job and you want to do a side hustle, you want to get something started, you want to start a business over here, make a commitment, make a time commitment. You could go to the gym for five hours today. Come back, look in the mirror, you probably won't see a difference. You could go to the gym for several weeks. If you're going to come home and eat chocolate cake and Doritos, you're not going to see a difference. If you'll make the commitment to eat right and you'll go to the gym for 20 minutes a day and you go every day, I don't know how long it'll take you to see a difference. I don't know if it's a week or 30 days or three months or six months, but I'll guarantee you one thing, you will start to see a difference. It's the same with your business. If you just get committed and be consistent, even if you're thinking you don't have time, can you commit to a couple hours on Saturday? Can you be consistent? Can you give it 30 minutes a night? Can you get up 30 minutes earlier? Can you stay up 30 minutes later? Just get started today. I'm proud of you guys. Love you and talk to you soon.